the defined uh, benefit a uh, plan a defined benefit a uh, plan the employer will need to be to make uh, some assumptions or we need to make some estimate about the future uh, which will enable the employer to be able to determine the benefit payable to the employees onward on retirement remember here we have said that the benefit payable to the employees uh, under this type of post employment benefit plan they are defined they are known inward in advance and therefore for the employer to be able to uh, determine those benefits and also to determine the contribution uh, he need to be making maybe monthly or annually he need to make those what assumption and therefore these are the estimate uh, which will be made about the future and which enable the employer to be able to determine benefit and contribution uh, uh, to be made maybe annually or monthly now this particular uh, uh, actually assumptions are usually classified into two one we do have uh, what if I, the financial uh, assumptions of which we talk about now uh, these assumptions they include assumptions uh, concerning the expected salary uh, increment uh, things like uh, the discount rate things like the expected market interest rate a uh, market interest rate and and so on. now on the other hand we do have uh, what if I, the demographic demographic uh, assumptions and these are assumptions concerning maybe a uh, early retirement of the employees the mortality rate uh, what if I, the employees turnover or maybe the employees were expected to leave the company and so on now these particular assumptions generally what you have said is that they are made by the employer for him to be able to determine the benefit payable to the employees and also the contribution which he will be what making but um what you have said is that uh, once we have these assumptions uh, which uh, are made by the employer then there may be a difference there may be a, a difference a difference between uh, those assumptions that is between actuarial assumptions uh, actuarial assumptions uh, assumptions and what actually happens and uh, what actually happens and uh, what uh, actually uh, happens what actually happens and if that is the case then the employer may be required to make more contribution or less contribution than he had determined using the actual assumptions uh, which he had made and therefore once now the employer is required to make make more contribution or less contribution then that will give rise to something we refer to as actuarial gain or actuarial what loss meaning that uh, the actuarial gain or actuarial uh, loss will arise the actuarial gain or actuarial uh, loss uh, arises uh, simply because the employer will be required to make more contribution or less than uh, more contribution less contribution than what he had actually would determine and therefore there is how we compute this particular uh, actuarial gain or loss so mean that we need to look on how we compute the actuarial uh, gain computation of uh, actuarial uh, gain again uh, a uh, stroke uh, loss stroke loss of which now whenever this actuarial gain or loss is to be computed it is should be computed both in respect now to the plan asset and also in respect to uh, the present value of the defined benefit obligation remember what you have said is that uh, if we have an employer maybe a company this employer or this company may be operating what if as a retirement benefit a scheme retirement benefit a scheme now once now the the the, the, the employer here or maybe this company make contributions then those contributions will be forwarded to this retirement benefit scheme and what you need to notice that um we may be having a retirement benefit a scheme which is under the control of the employer but on the other hand we do have those retirement benefit scheme which are not under the control of the employer so in this case you're talking of a retirement benefit a scheme which is under the control of the employer now once now the contributions are forwarded to this retirement benefit scheme we have said that this retirement benefit scheme first of all it will invest it will invest uh, those contributions and as a result of that it will be uh, having some assets which are known as planhood uh, asset on the other hand this retirement uh, benefit uh, plan here will be having an obligation to pay 
and the benefits to the employees once they proceed for their retirement. And basically, uh, what you have said is that in case of a defined uh, benefit plan, the benefits which are payable to the employees on their retirement are known with that all they are determined in advance and therefore what you have said is that whenever now the employer will be accounting for them he need to get their present value of which in that case now we have uh, referred to the present value of uh, those benefits payable in future as the present value of the defined benefit word obligation and therefore when computing this actual gain or loss we compute it in respect to plan asset and also in respect to what defined benefit obligation now first of all uh, to compute now the actuarial gain, the actuarial gain, uh, gain, a uh, stroke loss, a uh, stroke loss on a uh, first of all plan asset, uh, or basically we refer to that as fair value of a uh, plan asset, a uh, plan uh, asset. Uh, what we do is that um, we are supposed to <coughs> take the fair value, fair value of a plan asset, fair value of plan asset. S at the start of the year. S at the start of what? Of the year. Now this, we are going to adjust it with a number of items. One, we, uh, uh, or to that we add the expected return, expected return on plan asset, on plan asset. When we talk about the expected return on plan asset, these are the returns, e.g. dividends, e.g. interest, expected uh, to be generated by the plan would uh, asset. So once now um, a retirement benefit scheme receive any form of income from a plan asset, that that by the end of the day increases the value of what? The plan asset. To that still we add the contributions, the contributions uh, to the uh, scheme, to the uh, scheme. Now in this case when we talk about the contributions to the scheme, these are the contributions made by the employer to this retirement benefit scheme. Once now we have such contributions, by the end of the day they keep on increasing the value of the plan uh, asset. And then from there uh, we deduct we deduct the benefits, the benefits uh, paid. When we talk about the benefits which are paid, we are talking of uh, maybe the pension uh, which has been paid to the employees who have already proceeded for the year. Retirement. Once now we have benefits which are paid, they are paid from this plan asset. Uh, once we have a payment from the plan asset, the value of the plan asset do what reduces, and that's why we are deducting that uh, from the fair value of the plan asset. And then what we are supposed to do is to compute now the fair value of the plan asset based on some of the previous actuary assumptions which were were made. And once now we compute uh, that fair value of plan asset S at the end of the year, then this particular company here will engage a person who is known as an actuary, a person who is known as an actuary, to come in and do the valuation of this particular plan asset S at the end of what? Of the year. And therefore, once now that fair value of the plan asset is determined at the end of the year, we will be having it here, the fair value of what? A plan asset as per the valuation which was done at the end of the, of the, then what we need to do is basically to compare these two values. The fair value of the parent asset is at the end of the year and the fair value of the parent asset based on some of the previous studio assumptions. So the difference between the two here will be a, an actuarial a gain, will be an actuarial a gain, a gain, a stroke loss. Stroke what? loss. Of which in this case, because this is an asset, this is an asset, if at all we have increase in the value, that is an actuarial gain. If we have a decrease in the value, that is always an actuarial loss. Meaning that if at all may be as per the valuation which is done at the end of the year, there's a, there's an increase in the value of the uh, plan asset, that will be an actuarial loss. If there is a decrease then there is an actuarial what? A loss. So that's ordinarily how we compute the actuarial gain or loss as far as the plan asset are concerned. Then let's look on how we compute uh, the actuarial uh, gain, how we compute uh, actuarial uh, gain, a uh, stroke loss, stroke loss on present value of defined benefit obligation, defined benefit obligation. Remember, we have said that uh, 
a defined benefit obligation this or that is the present value of defined benefit obligation this is the present value of the benefit payable to the employees in future so therefore to an entity which operate this retirement benefit scheme this is a form of an uncurrent liability is a form of an uncurrent liability is a form of a, a, a long-term good liability and therefore in terms of how uh, we compute uh, the actual gain or loss in respect to this we will be given the or we take the present value of the defined benefit obligation as at the start of the year as at the start of the year and then to this we are supposed to add a number of items here of which in our pre uh, previous class we defined uh, some of these terms one we add the interest cost interest cost we said it is the increase in the present value of the defined benefit obligation because the service uh, the employees benefit at one period closer to a settlement that definitely is supposed to increase that eh? two we add the current service a uh, cost current service a uh, cost we add it there we also add the past service cost a uh, past service a uh, cost all those three items are supposed now to increase the present value of the defined benefit would obligation now once now we add those three items then we should proceed and we deduct we should proceed and we deduct benefit paid benefit paid the reason why we deduct uh, this benefit paid is because once we have some benefits which are paid by a retirement benefit scheme then the obligation to pay benefit in future keep on hold reducing so that's why we are supposed to deduct that there so once now we deduct that we are then supposed to compare whatever we are going to get there with the present value with the present value of the defined benefit obligation as at the end of the year still this present value of defined benefit obligation is the present value of benefit payable in future as determined as determined by this a professional uh, who is known as what as uh, an actuary and if at all may be there is any difference any difference uh, between these two values that will be an actuarial gain or loss meaning that the difference here is an actuarial gain stroke what stroke loss and uh, what you need uh, to note here is that uh, this present value of a defined benefit obligation basically you've said to an employer is an uncurrent liability meaning that if at all maybe there is a all um as per the valuation which is done at uh, this at the end of the year there is an increase there is what an increase in the present value of defined benefit obligation any increase is automatically a loss is automatically what a loss because if at all the the valuation or there is a valuation which is done and as a result of that the value of liability increases then the uh, uh, to the employer that is what that is a loss so therefore any increase is a loss meaning that any decrease any decrease here that is what that is a uh, again that is what again so therefore de uh, um, a decrease in respect to that is what is again so generally that's how um we compute uh, what if far as actual gain or loss as far as the present value of the defined benefit obligation is actually a uh, concern <laughs>